Hello, this is Steve Sines, your ATL Sherpa. Uh, this is part two of a two video series that I've recorded to uh, talk about some, some new tools that I've created uh, and also about my last public tour, which took place on August 15th of 2021. In part one, uh, in the first video, I provided an overview of, of what's on this web page that you're looking at right here called My Last Public Tour. Um, basically, I've assembled a, a series of images and historical information um, and, and maps and all kinds of cool things that you can uh, look at. Uh, and I've, I've described them in that video that talk about the things that we see as we walk along this particular part of the Beltline. Uh, the, the tour started uh, uh, on the East Side Trail where the picnic tables used to be uh, behind Parish, the former Parish uh, in Inman Park Village. We walk south through the Crog Tunnel into, uh, well, here's the map right here, uh, south through the tunnel uh, over, took a spin through Reynolds Town, uh, down to Memorial Drive, and then back up through Cabbage Town, back through the Crog Tunnel, a total of about four miles. So this video, I'm going to focus uh, specifically on this map, this interactive map that I've created, because I want to uh, make sure you understand how to get the most out of the map. And so I'm going to spend some time on this map and then and really drill down and show you some of the layers and things that I've created in here. So the map that you see here uh, on the web page, this is called an, an embedded map. I embedded it into the web page itself. So you can actually, uh, it's a full functioning map here as it is embedded. And if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you will see this little box there with the arrow. You click on that and that brings up the, the legend for this map. And this is, this is where all the good stuff is. So if you um, look, if you scroll down through here, you will see these different check boxes. These are uh, what they call layers or filters. And if you check the box, it will turn it'll turn things on and off on the map. So right now the points of interest are, are checked so they appear on the map. That's what these things are. If I uncheck that, watch what happens on the map, uh, those will go away. Uh, I just checked it back on. This little down arrow, the carrot, if you click on that, it just expands the list of all the points of interest and you will see all those points of interest. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to go over to the map in full screen in a minute, and I want to take you to all these things because there's this is where the good stuff is. Each one of these, uh, let's click on Atlanta Stove Works, for example, um, has its own images and information. Uh, so this is like a little library for you. This is a resource, a toolkit, a treasure chest. Uh, it's, it's all those things in one. So I would encourage you to spend some time on here, but this legend, again, this is where the good stuff is. So we're gonna unexpand that. We're gonna shrink it back down. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck points of interest and notice the walking route. And by the way, on the map, you can click and like I did here, and you can drag around the map. Um, you can also, by scrolling in and out, you can expand, zoom in or zoom out in the map there. So you can see where that tour took place. Um, you can see the area. We're going to get to more of that in a minute. We're going to, and then you can uncheck that and watch what happens. The, the route will go away. So I'm going to get rid of the route map. And now I have a clean map. Now, here's some other things over here. Look on this next layer. It's called a ATL Historic Beltline. So watch what happens when I click on that. What it's going to do. Now, this is, this is the whole Beltline corridor. So I'm going to scroll back down. But there you have the Atlanta Beltline corridor. The different the, the four different belt lines, which we'll talk about in a minute. That's that that's these ones, the Atlantic Richmond and so forth. But again, if you click on those, you will get detailed information about that belt line. So again, this is where the good stuff is. Let's take a look what else is on there. Uh, okay, this is another interesting um, layer I put on here. It's called Distance to Select Battle of Atlanta Events. Um, I have to scroll in a little bit more here, but I will get to this in a minute. What I've done, let's go back and put the walking route. As we walked along the route, starting up here at Parrish, I put the distance to various things. If you click on the points of interest, you'll see it. Um, and the reason I did this is I wanted to show you just how close 
we were to these various um, landmarks that came into play during the Battle of Atlanta. In some cases, like here, when you're sitting at Wiley Street, that's uh, Madison Reynolds General Store there at the end of the, uh, right there where the, the, the extension of the East Side Trail ends there on Wiley Street. Let me zoom in a little bit more here. You, you guys know this, this area. This is where the, the sidewalk at Wiley Street, but that's, that's Madison Reynolds. From there to the battle front line of the Battle of Atlanta is just a couple thousand yards. So this is why I talk about the Battle of Atlanta when I'm doing my Beltline tours. Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, when, we, when you walk down that stretch behind Stein Steel, you're probably walking, uh, there's no question about it, you are walking where the Confederate Army marched on its way over to the battlefront line, which is where Moreland Avenue is today. There's absolutely no question about it. So, and, and if you go through Reynolds Town, you may not know this, uh, but half the streets in Reynolds Town are named after Confederate generals. And that's because they marched right through that area to engage the, the, the Union Army um, there along on Long uh, Moreland Avenue. So that, that's the kind of stuff that's in here. And then the last thing I've got is I've got uh, some of the key developments that are happening in this stretch here. And we'll get to, to more of that in a minute. And those little developments are signified by these little cranes along there. So again, the moral of the story is make sure you spend some time in the legend of this map because this is where the good stuff is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now, by the way, there's a couple other things here. You see the little share button. Uh, this allows you to share, just like sharing anything on it. And if you want to embed this map on your website, if you're a web developer or if you give this to your website manager or whatever, if you want to embed this map, you can do that. You click on the embed button. Uh, link right there and it will give you some a little snippet of code that you copy and paste you can embed it directly there if you don't know how to do that send it to your web guy or web gal and they will be able to do that for you and then the last little um icon this is view larger map this is the little square in the upper right hand corner that's what i'm going to do here because i'm going to open this map in a new window and uh this is much easier to read so this time when I clicked on it, notice that the legend pops up automatically. Uh, this map was created in a, in a Google application that's called Google My Maps. It's a creator tool. Anybody can use it. It's a free tool. Uh, I've been using this for years. This is where I create all of my maps. But I want to just take a few minutes and, and walk you through what's in here because I've packed a lot of really, really good information. And, and this will give you a feel for, you know, how I conducted my tours. These are the kind of things that I talk about on my tours. My tours were, were very unique, uh, very educational. Um, and the reason for that is because I spent most of my career in training and development. And besides that, both of my parents were educators. So I kind of was wired to, to teach people things. And so my tours were tours. I mean, it was a typical tour. But uh, there was a lot of education baked in, and, and, and that was, was, was by design. So this will give you a feel for that. So anyway, getting back to the, um, the uh, legend over here, points of interest here. Let's, let's go through some of those. Again, you can click on the little down arrow to expand the list, or just click on 17 more, and that'll expand it here. So <clears throat> let me, I'll keep the route map on there. In fact, I'm also going to turn on the Belt, story belt line so you can see where the belt line runs through there actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the walking route off and just leave the the belt lines there and again these are the the belt lines i mentioned this in the first video but those that was a name that, that dates back to the 1890s that's what they called these uh freight train lines that they built around the city forming a belt kind of around the waist of the city but anyway zipping uh Zooming back in here, let me show you these um, points of interest here. So first one, uh, Atlanta and West Point Railroad Depot. This is the little depot where now where Muchacho and Golden Eagle was, I guess. But that corner of where the Beltline crosses over Memorial Drive, uh, that is the first point of interest on here. So. When, you, when I click either on the icon itself on the map or 
back over here in the point uh, in the legend, if I click on that, the name of that point of interest, Atlanta West Point, Atlanta and West Point Depot, it opens up, it slides over. You saw what happened here on the left. This is the information that I've included here. And in, in, if there's a link, um, uh, I, I included a link to the source of information or whatever it is. And in most cases, back in all cases, I've included either a still image or a video up in the um, image area of, of, the, of the legend. So that's that one. This is pretty cool. Atlanta Joint Terminal Company. What in the world is that? Well, you click on that. And what you see here, if you click on it here, this is, you notice it's in the middle of Holsey Yard. This is Holsey Yard that runs right through here. And that little train icon is for the Atlanta Joint uh, Terminal. And what I've done here, if you click on the image itself, it opens up a larger version of the image that I provided for you. Uh, this is an image from the Sanborn fire maps from 1911. And what you see here, this round, pink round, semi-round building there, they called it a roundhouse. This was a, a locomotive facility, and that is located where Holsey Yard is today. And if you look at the very bottom of the map, that's Wiley Street right here, and these train tracks are that's right there where the mouse is on Wiley Street. That is where the extension of the East Side Trail well, begins if you're going south toward Memorial Drive or ends if you're going up toward Wiley Street. But that's where that is. And that's pretty cool. That shows you what was there. On the other side of the tracks, you'll see some roads like Waverly Way and DeKalb Avenue. That's the Inman Park side. Uh, of, of Holsey Yard over here. So these yellow, uh, you'll notice some of these streets over here. Some of them aren't here anymore, but some of them are. I think Kenyon Way is still there on another map, but um, very interesting to see what was there. Um, and this would have been a junction, right? There, would, there were several railroad lines that came into play right here. And um, let's see what else I have here. Ah, there it is. So by the way, if you look up in the upper left-hand corner, see it says one of two, let's go back here. Um, I clicked, there are two photos here on this point of interest. So click on that. And then if there's a carrot on the right side, that will take you to the other image. In some cases, I've included multiple images here. This is really a cool photo because this is a blow up, a close up of the Southeastern portion of the Sanborn fire map. And you can clearly see the Atlanta and West Point Belt Railroad that runs along. And those of you who are familiar with this area or who live down here will recognize and name some of these streets. Here's where it crosses Glenwood Avenue right here. This is technically where the South Side Trail starts right here. There's Kirkwood Avenue right there where Sweet Cheats runs through uh, Cabbage Town, and, and that's where it runs through Reynolds Town right here. That's the at grade crossing right there in Kirkwood, Flat Shoals Road. That would be where um, Park Grounds is, and this is actually where we came along. But that joint railroad terminal that I was talking about, see where it says 480 right here in the upper right hand corner? That's where that is. That is where the Georgia Railroad, which runs east and west through here, basically merged with the Atlanta West Point Railroad. While we're on this map, I wanna show you something else that's very, very clear here. If you notice that Atlanta West Point Belt Railroad came up through here and it, it technically ended right here at Wiley Street. Okay, then there was this little, I don't know what you call this, a little um, spur, if you will, this little, junction that goes into this is this is a wide junction as well right here so there was this little spur that went to the right for the trains that were going to continue on to the DeKalb Railroad going east toward Decatur uh, then they could also go west over here and connect going into downtown into the Georgia Road and then eventually connect into the Western and Atlantic Railroad which is and this is the wide junction over here in the Gulch okay but I want to show you right up in here, there's another railroad line 
that goes up and off to the top of the map here. And this is the East Side Trail. If this is um, which was known as the Southern Railway. This was actually built as a passenger railroad line initially. And, but the point I'm trying to make here is this is a great example of a place where the two different belt lines did not connect. They, they, and, and this gap right here from here over to here is the stretch that runs along Wiley Street. And so one of the challenges that the Atlanta Belt Line has is to, to connect these belt lines that were not originally meant to be one contiguous loop around the city. So that's, uh, and you'll see that in other places along the 22 mile corridor, but that's, that's a great uh, way of connecting to the past. This is uh, what I talked about in the first video here about using different tools and maps and things like that to help people understand that this is this, is this uh, spatial context that uh, Dr. Pollock was talking about in that wonderful quote that I read in my, la in my last uh, video. So anyway, let's go back to the, um, to the legend here, see what else is on here. There's Madison Reynolds General Store. There's a photo of what that store looked like. I got that from the reynoldstown.net. Uh, you, you got a, a, a link right there that will take you to that page. I copied just a little snippet out of that that talks about that. That general store where Madison Reynolds had his general store, that building is still there. And that's Wiley Street, by the way. Uh, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, Atlanta Stove Works. Great. Uh, for those of you that, uh, that don't know uh, where Krog Street Market is now, or what, the, what they're now calling the Krog District, that whole area right up in here, all this right in here was a stove manufacturing company called Atlanta Stove Works. And here's the whole history of that. If you click on that again, you get a larger version of it. This is a front cover of a, of a basically a marketing brochure that they had created here. That gives you a sense of, of what was there. This is what was where Krog Market is today. That's what stood there. It was a manufacturing facility. And this is uh, what I was talking about in my previous video when I talked about this 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 evolution from the production driven economy to the consumption driven economy. I mean, just think about what happened on that site. They used to make it was an industrial manufacturing company that made steel, iron based stoves, huge wood burning stoves that people use to, to warm their homes and and uh, cook with by the hundreds, if not thousands, and they would ship those stoves out on these trains all over the United States and probably around the world. All that's gone. And what people do now is eat and drink and, and, and hang out. And it, so we've gone from a production driven site to a consumption driven site. Uh, and it's about ready to get bigger because they're expanding it greatly. But here's, here's the, here's the, uh, the history of that. So I think you get you get the uh, you get the point here. Each one of these points of interest, um, there's a, a beautiful, beautiful photo, uh, probably from the 1930s. I'm going to guess maybe 1940s, that showed what the Ford factory looked like. That's the Ford factory lofts. Look at that huge. Uh, berm that's there that they, they cut through there so this is where the kroger and 725 ponce and all that is today and then over here on the left would be the the Pont city market but you can see what that belt with that rail line that's the old uh, uh southern railway uh look like as it was approaching ponce de leon avenue right there that's that's really talk about connecting to the past that is a stunning photo so uh Take your time with this. Um, I, I've got a lot of really cool information here. So the the railroad, the little choo-choo train is, is, a, is a railroad related point of interest. The little gear here would be that it was a manufacturing company. Uh, General Pipe and Foundry, you probably have no idea what that is. Uh, but if you click on this, you'll get an image that's very cool. This is an image of a another industrial plant that was in Inman Park Village called the General Pipe and Foundry Company. The reason I put this on here is because this little pink building in the very bottom is still there. That's where Parish Restaurant used to be. That's what they call the pattern shop, as in a pattern to make a dress, or in this case, to make pipes and other 
of equipment. It'd be like a, like a blueprint. Uh, that's the pattern shop. And that building is where Parrish is. So where we meet, uh, where we met on that tour was back over here behind the parking lot here where, um, where the picnic tables used to be. So anyway, spend some time with this here. Highland Steel, Mead Paper. That's another interesting one if you don't know. There's the only photo I could find of Mead Paper, but that is where Mariposa lofts are and all that. Um, you know, Inman Park Village uh, was basically an, an entire, in, there was a steel company, Mead Paper. This is, you know, light to heavy industrial manufacturing. Is, is what was there. You know, you've got the, 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 the neighborhood, the residential area over here, Atlanta's oldest uh, suburb, but along that freight train line was an industrial area uh, that is now Inman Park Village. So again, there's not a better example in the entire city of Atlanta of, of this, what I was talking about, of going from a production-driven economy to a consumption-driven economy. There's no better example than in Inman Park Village, all of Inman Park Village. Is, is basically that. And by the way, another thing you can do here, if you scroll down to the bottom of the legend, the very bottom left, there's a little um, image that allows you to switch over to the satellite view, which if you really wanna see what things look like, that's really helpful as well. So here's where the belt line goes through here, all up in here. Uh, all up in here was where the mead factory was, the mead paper plant was. Um, all up in here, let's see, there's the pattern shop. There's the old uh, pattern shop from the pipe and foundry. So the pipe and foundry company would have been all up through here. That's where uh, Barcelona is now. And the steel company uh, was all up. I believe that was back up over in this area here, Highland Steel. So you, get, you really get a sense of what this looks like. Here's the residential area over here. And then as you got closer and closer, all of this would have been industrial manufacturing all up through here. And then further down, if you go back over here, uh, all of this where Crog Street is right here, basically all of this, this is Crog Market. So all up through here, that, that stove works, I believe that probably took up that, that picture that I showed you of stove works is probably all of this right in here. As a matter of fact, if you click on that little gear right there, there's that photo right there. So if you look at that photo, that was probably all of that. I don't know. Well, it said here, corner of Irwin and Crog Streets and the Southern Railway. Well, there you go. Okay, so let me show you what else. Let's, let's go down a little bit further here. Um, oh, okay. Spent a little time here talking about, I'm gonna go back to, um, the street view map because it's more familiar to a lot of people here. All right, I'm gonna spend a little time talking about the Battle of Atlanta. And the reason is, notice where all these little cannons are over here. These are all points of interest um, that I've included on the map. So first, let's start with Sherman. Okay, let will zoom back out a little bit here. And again, let me, this is the route. This is the route of the, of the tour that I did here. So the reason that I've included all these points of interest is because we walked basically within a few feet of, of some of these points of interest. And in, a, in the case of the Battle of Atlanta, within a few thousand feet. So I think this is important to understand what happened and where. So I'm going to turn that off just for visibility point. But let's go up here to the, to the um, legend here. And let's, so Battle of Atlanta, let's, let's start with the one that says Sherman, okay? That's this one here in the middle of the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library. Right there where the Carter Library is today stood a house. And that house is where General Sherman watched the Battle of Atlanta take place. So if I click on the image that's in this for this panel, it's going to open up an image, a beautiful image. This is one I took over there of the cyclorama. And this is an image that shows the house. You see that house there on the top of the hill? That's the house that stood where the Jimmy Carter Library is. You can see this was quite a hill at that time. This was the, uh, the painting from the cyclorama that was uh, painted by the, the, the uh, German and Aus Austrian artists. If you look right over here where my mouse is, you see this guy on the horse? 
that is General Sherman watching the Battle of Atlanta and his, a lot of these are probably his troops here, uh, sort of heading over that way. That that way is the Inman Park Martyr Station. That's where the Battle of Atlanta was, was that's what he's watching there at around 4.30 in the afternoon on July 22nd of 1864. So again, talk about connecting with the past and the present. Uh, this is where the Carter Library is today. And that beautiful uh, painting that from the from the uh, cyclorama gives us this window into the past. Um, here, the second if this, the second image is actually a video, and this is a video that I recorded at the site. It was called the Augustus Hurt Plantation. That was the house you just looked at on the previous uh, image, where Sherman watched the battle. And then there's a picture of uh, General Sherman right there. So. Uh, again, every one of these, let's go to the next one. Let's go to see where Hood, General Hood was the commanding officer of the Confederate army. He watched the battle from a house that stood right here where Oakland Cemetery is today. And if you click on the image there, it opens up an, a video that I recorded and you see right there, there's the marker where Hood watched the Battle of Atlanta. And this is just north um, of, of the main uh, visitor center there uh, at, at Oakland Cemetery. And if you watch that video, I give you a panorama and you can see that this was also a very high hill. And if you've ever been uh, in Oakland Cemetery, you know uh, that it's a very high point in the city of Atlanta, as is the Carter Library. So it's not a coincidence that Hood would have watched the Battle of Atlanta from Oakland Cemetery. Sherman watched the Battle of Atlanta from where the Carter Library is, and that's about a mile apart. Now, the Battle of Atlanta we're talking about all happened right over here, but, but look what I'm talking about. The Beltline runs right in between where these two generals watched the Battle of Atlanta unfold, okay? and. Um, Again, if I bring my walking route in there, you'll see that our walking route for this tour took us right through that area as well. All right, so um, this is important because of what happened here and because of the importance itself of this battle. As I mentioned in my previous video, uh, the Battle of Atlanta was a major battle. As a matter of fact, let's take a look and see how major it was. See where it says Battle of Atlanta map and overview. That's this little guy right here on Moreland Avenue. And you'll understand why. Let's take a look at that. Let's click on that. And it's going to open up the panel. And here's an overview of the battle. It took place on July 22nd of 1864. The result was a Union victory. That is the Union Army, United States of America, led by General Sherman and General James McPherson won the battle. They, they prevailed. Commanders, Union Army was led by William Sherman, Confederate Army by John Bell Hood, the guy we just talked about that watched the battle from Oakland Cemetery. Forces engaged, 75,300 men mostly. Union Army had 30, almost 35,000. Confederate Army had 40,000. Estimated casualties, 9,222. 3,700 from the Union Army, 5,500 from the Confederate Army. There is a brief description uh, of the Battle of Atlanta. And <clears throat> more importantly, I want to show you the map so you can appreciate what happened here. Let me, let's me let click on the battle, uh, the troop position map. All right. This is a very interesting map. It was created by a group called uh, CivilWar.org. And... If you look at the map, you will see the, what they call the troop positions. The blue lines, the blue names over here are the Union Army. That's Sherman's Army. Actually, this was uh, the commander in the field was General James McPherson, who died that day in East Atlanta Village. And then the red lines and the red guys over here are the Confederate States Army. So they are coming in from the west and they are protecting the city of Atlanta, which is off to the left over here. So it says Cheatham, 
right behind Cheatham would have been uh, where Hood was watching the Battle of Atlanta from uh, Oakland Cemetery. So city of Atlanta is off to the left over here. Sherman, this is the Georgia Railroad that runs through here. This goes to Decatur. This area right in here is basically uh, Edgewood and Candler Park all through here. So, and these red guys over here, all this is part of the story of the Battle of Atlanta, which is fascinating. Hardy is down here. That was from Hardy's Night March. So those of you that have been on my, on my tours that I've done with the Battle of Atlanta, these are the four battalions, Bate, Walker, Manny, and Cleburne were the four battalions that went with Hardy on Hardy's Night March, which was supposed to be the surprise attack where they were going to come in on the Union's left flank and, and crush this left flank over here. Um, and it would have might have worked if they've got gotten there on time, but they were six hours late coming up through Sugar Creek here. And by that time, uh, Dodge's 16th Corp had moved into position that morning. And instead of uh, instead of Walker and Bate uh, crushing the back of the Union left flank, they ran straight into these this battery of guns, which which were sitting on the hill where Alonzo Crim um, open school is right now. Uh, on Memorial Drive and and um, and Clifton Road, and uh, that was the beginning of the end for the for the Confederates right there. So anyway, the 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 net net of this map is that this solid blue line right here is where Moreland Avenue is today. What you're looking at here, this is sort of a modern day map that was superimposed. This roadway right here is I-20. So when I when I say that I-20 was, was, was built on top of the Battle of Atlanta battlefield, that's what I'm talking about. Literally, it was running through there. The reason Memorial Drive is called Memorial Drive is because of this battle. And so all of this took place. Let me go back to the contemporary map and show you where all this took place. That map you were just looking at is basically right here. So if you live in Kirkwood, Lake Clare, Edgewood, Little Five Points, Inman Park, Cabbage Town, Reynolds Town, Glenwood Park, or East Atlanta Village, your house sits on the battlefield. Your, your, your house sits and you put your head down on your pillow every night where somebody died, pretty sure. Or if not died, marched, got shot, uh, on July 22nd of 1864. And that to me is, is, is pretty profound because 99.9% .9 of the people who live there and live in Atlanta have absolutely no idea this happened. That's what makes it so profound to me. And so that's why I think it's important to study uh, the Battle of Atlanta. And remember, the Union Army won the battle. The Confederate army was defeated. And this was, for all practical purposes, the end of the Civil War. This was one of the most important Civil War battles that occurred in the entire Civil War. And yet we have no battlefield. We have a, a dearth, a vacuum of knowledge and understanding about this battle. And really all we have are these uh, markers these historical markers that are scattered all over the city uh, in this area. All of, these, all of these cannons represent one of those. So spend some time with this. Uh, one of my favorite is the, is the railroad cut. Um, this is over right where the Inman Park Martyr Station is here. There's the battle. So if you click on that, if you click on that image, it brings up, there used to be four markers here. There's now only two because they moved a couple of them. But one of them, the one, one of the one of the two that's still remaining is, is called the railroad cut. And the railroad cut, this is DeKalb Avenue, this is Battery Street, and the Union, uh, I'm sorry, the Inman Park Marta Station is. I, I actually shot this video from the bridge that goes over DeKalb Avenue on at the Marta Station. And it's a really interesting video because it really gives you an aerial perspective of what happened here. But that image right here, another photo that I took of the Battle of Atlanta, this is what they call the railroad cut. And that's what they're describing 
on that historical marker and what I described in my video. This essentially, what you're looking at right here is what the Inman Park, where the Inman Park Marty Station is today, that's basically what it looked like. That's the Georgia Railroad. And there was a cut in the hill that they cut through there for, for the railroad to run through there. The, U, the Confederate Army was able to cross over that um, railroad line and attack the Union Army late in the afternoon um, in, in a surge that took place uh, basically on DeGress Avenue. And I've got that one in here as well. Another one here, see where it says uh, Battle of the Land, DeGress Avenue. Another, that's what a video that I shot of what it looked like there. But that basically is uh, where the, where the, so, so I got the true prairie house here. Yeah, this is, this is a better, no, I don't have the image from, um, that's that's the where the Troop Herd House was on DeGress Avenue. This is really the the the, the denouement of the battle. This was the the peak fighting around 4:30 in the afternoon, where the uh, Confederate Army successfully overtook the DeGress Battery, which was a Union battery of four um, like howitzer type guns that were there at the end of DeGress Street. Uh, briefly, they were they were able to take them over for just a couple of hours, uh, like an, an hour, maybe. Uh, this is what the fighting looked like on where DeGress Avenue is today. That is uh, the Troop Herd House right there that was under construction. It never was finished. And that's uh, that's a scene from the from the cyclorama as well. So anyway, all of this is baked into this map. I would encourage you to spend some time uh, looking at this because um, it, it's pretty fascinating. And when you, when you realize what happened uh, in Reynoldstown and Inman Park and, and Edgewood and Candler Park and East Atlanta, you, you really, uh, you'll, you'll never drive through that area again. This is what happened to me when I, when I first, when I, when I really understood what happened here, you know, and, and when I, when I, especially when I started connecting images like this, when I realized that this bloodshed with 78, 70, 80,000 forces and 9,200 casualties took place, literally, I've never driven down these streets the same again. I, 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 when I drive down Memorial Drive, when I drive down Edgewood, when I drive through Inman Park, when I drive by or take the MARTA to, to the Inman Park MARTA station, this is what I see. Like I, this is burned into my brain. I cannot get it out of my brain. And so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but uh, that's what happened to me. So uh, anyway, that's what studying history will do to you. And then the last thing I want to, to leave you with uh, are, are these uh, historic belt lines down here. Actually, there's a couple more things. Um, there's good information about the various belt lines and some images that you will see there. Uh, in this case, there's three photos. There's a great picture, uh, old from the 40s and 50s. I think I showed you this picture before. This is the Sanborn fire map, but this is the whole city. So there was four quadrants that the Sanborn fire map uh, had created. You can see the, the quadrants here, and you can clearly see the railroad tracks that go all the way around the city in that old Sanborn fire map. And there's that image that I showed you earlier, I believe in the first video where I talked about the four different belt lines. All right, let's go on to another layer down here. Uh, okay, this is this is kind of cool. So let me let me do this again here. All right, just to really help people, you know, understand how close all this stuff was. I, I drew these lines. So if you click on this layer called distance to selected Battle of Atlanta events. So if you click on that, the where we started the tour, which essentially was uh, at Parrish, where Parrish used to be, was 2,100 feet or four tenths of a mile from the Augustus Hurt House where Sherman watched the Battle of Atlanta. Hood 
watched it, as you know, from Oakland Cemetery, which is six tenths of a mile or 3,200 feet from Shake Shack. So the next time you're sitting at Shake Shack, look to the west, to the southwest, and think about Hood sitting there 3,200 feet away watching the Battle of Atlanta. The railroad cut, which we just talked about before, also four tenths of a mile uh, from Madison Reynolds General Store on Wiley Street, so 2,100 feet. And um, there is another historical marker that's called Benton and Coltart's Brigade. And uh, this is uh, three tenths of a mile from Madison Reynolds General Store or 1600 feet. Let me show you the image there. This is a Google image. Uh, those of you that either live or have driven through Reynolds Town, you might recognize this intersection. It's Walthall Street and Boulevard Drive. This is not Boulevard like over closer to Atlanta. This is in the heart of Reynolds Town. And this is a, a view looking down Boulevard at the end of this street is Moreland Avenue. You probably have never seen it, but if you look on the left side here, there's a historical marker. And that's what's called Benton and Coltart's Brigade. Next time you drive through on Walthall, stop and read that marker. And here's what happened. These were Confederate troops that were heading that way, which is west. And they met about five houses down. There's another marker that talks about the Confederate Army. Okay, These two armies met halfway down this street and engaged. So this is what I mean when I say, if you live in any of these neighborhoods, if you live in any of these houses or travel through these neighborhoods, you put your head down every night where a soldier was either shot or marched or got killed. It's a, it's a guarantee. And the reason we know that is because of the number of troops, almost 80,000, imagine 80,000 troops marching and fighting hand to hand, basically. This was all farmland, right? This was, there were no streets, there were no houses. This is all farmland, but that's what happened here in all these neighborhoods. So. Once again, I think that's uh, the, the reason it's so important to, uh, to study this stuff. And then the last thing here is uh, development activity. I've just included a few. I've got other maps where I show more of this. But if you click on, like if you want to see what's happening at 760 Ralph McGill, uh, that is the, the big development over there uh, where, the, where the Georgia Power facility used to be on... Uh, right there where historic fourth ward park is that's a that's a view of what what that's going to look like uh when it's done and uh you can see that for yourself and there's some some links and, and information about that uh Halsey yard uh that's kind of an off it uh, was on again now it's off again uh csx uh, was rumored to be selling it and uh some of the local residents formed a committee to do some planning about what they wanted to have happen over there at Olsey Yard. So I've, I've included some links to all of that. Uh, the Krog District is in the process of going through a, a massive uh, expansion right now. And so that this, uh, this panel talks about that. And there's some links there to, to um, what's happening there. So um, there's the Portman development that's just been announced. That's uh, gonna be some office space over there where uh, SPX Alley is. And then Stein Steel, which is really happening as we speak. That's that old uh, family-owned fabricate steel fabrication plant over there in Reynolds Town uh, that is uh, being demolished right now to make way for uh, a new development uh, that's that's happening over there. So uh, anyway, that's that's my interactive map. Um, I hope you find this interesting. I hope you share this with others. I hope you spend some time with it. I created this to help people connect with Atlanta's past, present, and future. And I hope that you will use this as a tool to, to explore the city and do what, do what uh, Dr. Pollock said, which was to, to juxtapose you know, these images and these maps and this historical information with present day uh, infrastructure and buildings so that you can you know, ferret out, as he said, what happened, when and where, 
So anyway, hope you have a great uh, fall season. Uh, that, this is what I call exploring weather. Uh, I'll be building, if you like these kind of maps, I'm, I'm in the early stages of, of a project that's going to consist of a couple dozen uh, special websites. These are standalone websites, and each one will be built based on a map like this with lots of uh, interesting information. So anyway, I hope you find this helpful. Um, this is Steve, your ATL Sherpa.